So, the earliest Christians did not consider Sunday a replacement for the Sabbath. Again, outside of Alexandria and Rome, most Christians observed both days. So, what happened? Hello there, friends. Welcome once again to the YouTube channel. You hear it, Pastor James Devil on this, and I got a good one for you today. And this is coming from 119 Ministries. I had to look them up. <laughs> I've heard about this ministry before. I didn't know what. I mean, I've heard about some of their videos. I've seen it. Uh, their perspective on the Sabbath is kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, there's a lot of people, they get mad when we talk as seven day Adventists about the seven day Sabbath. Oh, you guys, all oh, this Sabbath business, yada, yada, yada. Listen, it's not just Sabbath that we talk about. <laughs> we love the Lord, we love His truth. We, we, we talk about Christian living, relationship, family, children, marriage. Listen, we, we talk about health. Okay, and we also talk about the Sabbath. But oftentimes, the pushback is that these Adventists, they, they keep promoting this thing. And I'm here to say, listen, man, we are not the only one. You know, according to, I could not find this, this document. I had it, but I could not find it. There are over 480 different Sabbath-keeping denomination in the world right now. And if you go on on Wikipedia, the archives is saying, listen, man, you have Advent Church Promise. You have Creation Seven Day Ad uh, Adventist Church, Sabbath Red Advent, Advent Church. We are here, Seven Day Adventist Church, but there's also Seven, seven Day Adventist Reform, Reform Movement, uh, Chew and Free, Seven Day. I mean, listen, it's not just us, there's a whole list. And we can go on and on and on and on. Listen, man. It's not just a seven day Adventist thing. It's a biblical thing. And this stuff has gone like wildfire. <laughs> like Sherman Williams. It's covering the whole world. A lot of denominations are waking up to the Sabbath, my dear friends. It's not just seven day Adventists. I just want to let you know. So if you think we're the only enemies you got to worry about, well, you got another thing's coming. Because you got a, over 400 and something, 80 different groups that are actually keeping the Sabbath and believe similar teaching as we do. What are you going to do? So here is the thing. I say that to say this. 119 Ministries, they're not also, they're not even seven day Adventists. I looked them up and find out what they're about. Listen, they just love the word of God and they love to preach the truth. That's it. They don't even have a denomination behind their names. All they care about is that we believe the, the whole and changing word of God is for all in the faith and applicable today. That's what they believe. We believe that we are to teach all nations to obey the Torah, which is the law of God. We believe we are saved by grace through faith in the word of God, Jesus, Yeshua. We believe our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ the righteous, thought the Torah and obeyed it perfectly. We believe that our master died for our sins on the cross. We believe, for more on what we believe, please see this short video. I mean, listen, <laughs> there, there are not seven-day Adventists. Can I emphasize this one more time? <laughs> anyway, let's watch this video. This is very interesting. I'm just going to stay quiet. I'm just going to stay quiet and enjoy the show. This is the kind of videos I don't have anything to say. All I'm going to say is amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, let's move on. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you because they're going to tell you now how Christianity went from Sabbath to Sunday. How Christianity went from, from Sabbath to Sunday. Listen, this is going to shock you. It shouldn't shock you for those of you who already know the history. But the way they put this thing together is like, well done, well done. Let's take a listen. Why don't most modern Christians keep the Sabbath on the seventh day, Saturday? One popular belief is that it's because God changed the Sabbath to Sunday in the New Testament. For instance, the Westminster Confession states, From the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ, the Sabbath was the last day of the week, and from the resurrection of Christ was changed into the first day of the week. However, many Christians might be surprised to learn that the New Testament itself does not teach that the Sabbath had changed. The apostles continued to keep the Sabbath on the seventh day, long after the Messiah's resurrection. And, as we'll see, Sunday was not widely considered a replacement of the Sabbath in Christianity until centuries after the time of the apostles. 
Some might say that the New Testament speaks about the apostles meeting on the first day of the week, Sunday. There is one, maybe two passages that mention early believers meeting on Sunday. However, there is no indication that these were weekly meetings, let alone that the earliest Christians had any intention of changing the Sabbath. In fact, according to the book of Acts, the earliest Christians continued to observe the Sabbath on the seventh day. Luke records that it was Paul's custom to worship in the synagogue on the Sabbath, just like it was Jesus' custom. According to New Testament scholar Harold Weiss, the New Testament shows that the Sabbath occupied a prominent position in the early Christian communities. Since the Bible does not support replacing the seventh-day Sabbath with Sunday, how did we get to where we are today with most Christians worshiping on Sunday instead? We will explore that question soon, but first, while the transition from Sabbath to Sunday began early in Christian history, many might be surprised to learn that this change was not immediate, nor was it universal among Christians. For instance, two 5th century church historians, Socrates Scholasticus and Sozomen, testify that almost all Christians outside of Alexandria and Rome continued to observe the Sabbath alongside Sunday. As scholar Kenneth Strand observes, this evidence demonstrates that, quote, even as late as the 5th century, almost the entire Christian world observed both Saturday and Sunday for special religious services. So, the earliest Christians did not consider Sunday a replacement for the Sabbath. Again, outside of Alexandria and Rome, most Christians observed both days. So, what happened? Well, during the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, there was a growing conflict between Jews and the Roman Empire. This conflict, quote, made it necessary for Christians to develop a new identity in order to avoid the repressive and punitive measures, fiscal, military, political, and literary, aimed at the Jews. In Alexandria and Rome, where persecution of Jews was especially fierce, there was a strong motivation to disassociate Christianity from Judaism. This led to the Christian communities in those places abandoning Sabbath observance early on. But once again, these motivations were not universal. As we saw earlier, most Christians living outside of Alexandria and Rome continued to observe the Sabbath in addition to Sunday as late as the 5th century AD. In any case, the earliest Christians did not consider Sunday a replacement of the Sabbath. Sunday was its own religious day. In fact, originally, Sunday was not even a day of rest. So, how did Sunday eventually become recognized as the quote-unquote Christian Sabbath? Well, on March 7, 321 AD, the Emperor Constantine decreed that Sunday would be a day of rest. Christian historian Justo Gonzalez summarizes the significance that this edict had for Christians. Now that Sunday became a day of rest, civil laws had to determine what work was lawful on that day. This was soon followed by ecclesiastical laws also determining which activities were allowed on Sunday and which were forbidden. Under such circumstances, it is not surprising that Sunday was now connected with Sabbath rest and with the commandment ordering it. This was the great change introduced by Constantine's decree. It brought about a connection between Sunday and Sabbath rest that was not present in earlier Christian thought and devotion. In the long run, this would lead to discussions as to whether Sunday abolished the Sabbath, whether Christian worship should be on the Sabbath, and so on. Constantine's decree opened the door for later ecclesiastical authorities to discourage Sabbath observance and mandate Sunday observance exclusively. For instance, around 60 years after this decree, the Council of Laodicea's Canon 29 demanded, Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Lord's Day, Sunday, and if they can, resting then as Christians. As time went on, church authorities increasingly disparaged Sabbath observance and promoted only Sunday observance, as Strand remarks. This process brought about a widespread conflict of Sunday with the Seventh-day Sabbath, and eventually in medieval times this Sunday Sabbath came to displace the original Saturday Sabbath generally throughout Europe. After the Reformation, in English-speaking countries, Sunday not only replaced the Sabbath, but also even came to be called the Sabbath. Protestant Christian confessions, sermons, and literature from this period all affirm the Sabbath commandment, yet Sunday is what is meant. 
So the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not by the scriptures, but by political edicts and church councils centuries after the time of the apostles. To be clear, there is nothing wrong with going to church on Sunday, or any other day for that matter. Historically, we know that Christians did hold religious services on Sunday. However, there is a problem when we break commandments for the sake of keeping traditions. We must not be like the Pharisees whom Jesus rebuked by saying, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. May we as Christians uphold the scriptures as our final authority. The fourth commandment says to honor the Sabbath. The seventh day, not the first day or any other day, is a holy day that God told us to keep. Let's obey the scriptures like the apostles did and remember the Sabbath. I'll tell you what, I know an honest man when I see one. I know a God-fearing man when I see one. I see a ministry who's trying to do the best that they can with the knowledge that they have. I know one when I see one. There you go. This is no nonsense, no excuses kind of stuff you're hearing right now. What you're hearing here is truth as God lives. This is nothing based on some preconceived notion handed down to us by the papal power, by the mother church. They're not repeating talking points here. They're giving you Bible and history, common sense mixed with love and humility. You can't fight against that. I can't fight against this. This is like, this is the kind of stuff when I hear, I just keep quiet. I just like, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah. That's it. <laughs> This is the kind of message that brought me into Adventist church. This is the way I've heard it. And it made sense. There was no, there was no sugarcoating the message. In a matter of six minutes and 48 seconds, he just gave you a serious solid historical lessons. And he said, we still got evangelicals who watch this channel. I love you, man. I have respect for you. But brother, you are fighting against the wrong group of people. We are your friends, not your enemies. You think because you fight against us against the Lord's Sabbath, you think that's working in your favor. My friend, you're making a huge mistake. All you're simply doing here is doing the work of the papal power. You are assisting the mother church. Stop it. You're not helping your case. I have love and respect for you. The truth is the truth. You just heard it today. You can argue and fight with me all you want. Hit me over the head with a baseball bat. I listen, I don't listen. You are wasting your time because what you are fighting up against is the truth. And the truth at the end, like John Wycliffe says, will conquer. You can never stop that. But I will say this to the people whose hearts are softened, they look into understand more. Listen, my information is below. You got questions and you want to know how to do this thing to transition, keep the Sabbath and find a Sabbath giving church. Let us know. We will assist you. We will assist you. But there are some of you who are hostile against the message. Hostile, you want to fight. Listen, you want to debate. Listen, you're not the person I'm looking for. I'll pray for you. You go ahead and do what you need to do. We're going to obey the voice of the Lord. We're going to listen to what God has to say. We're going to wrestle and struggle and learn along the way to grow. But as far as I'm concerned, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and keep his seven day Sabbath. This much I know. You don't want to obey the voice of your God when it comes to the fourth commandment. You want to make excuses for Sunday? Have at it. You go ahead and do what you want to do. I'll leave you in the hands of Jesus as far as I'm concerned. But one thing I do know, I done told you the truth. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Share your thought and perspective with me. Until next time. Have a good one. I'm going to put a link in the description below for this video, okay? Make sure you go show them some love. 119 Ministries, they got a whole lot of good videos going on in that channel. You can learn a whole lot from them. I can tell you that much. There's a whole lot of document here to work with. There's a whole lot of historical research done. You want some substance? You want some stuff to work with, to study, to go in depth in your stuff? Go check them out. They're doing a great work for the Lord. This much I know. <sighs> Have a good one. Bye commandment says to honor the Sabbath. The seventh day, not the first day or any other day, is a holy day that God told us to keep. Let's obey the scriptures like the apostles did and remember the Sabbath.